Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another session by Scalar Academy where we will be talking about game theory in detail. Let's dive right in. Here is everything you need to know about game theory. So if you are interested in learning the concepts of game theory, its application and various other things, stick with us till the end of this video and keep on watching. During trips or while going out with your friends, you probably don't pay much attention on minor decisions you are making. Remember, Every decision includes multiple maths and science concepts that you often take for granted. To put it rightly, there are a lot of maths and science concepts that go behind your decision making or when you are in public places. This is known as game theory. Let's understand game theory in detail. But before we start with actual decision, we would request you all to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to be notified about every video we post. Are you guys ready? Let's dive right in. Game theory was established in the year 1950s by John Nash, a well-renowned mathematician. He wasn't your regular guy as he was more than you could ever imagine. When we talk about game theory, we do not talk about games we regularly play or think about. However, it's more complex and intuitive concept that changed many lives. So what exactly is game theory? Before understanding game theory, let's see what exactly a game is. Though it sounds like a stupid question as to who doesn't know what a game is, in game theory, the game is slightly different concept than you would be shocked to know. A game is a competitive activity that at least involves two people who show off their skills according to a set of rules, usually aiming to win. It is the interaction between two or more people in which each person's idea is highly influenced by the decision taken by some other person. This is a common phenomenon that can be applied to a game of chess or mostly any scenario where two or more individuals get along with each other and fall into a conversation. Let's apply this definition to a couple of games. Is Sudoku a game? Well, you must be answering yes. But in theory, Sudoku is not a game. This is because the way you decide to solve the problem or lay out your strategy does not affect the other player as you are just solving the entire puzzle. Another example could be chess. What do you think a game is in context of game theory? Yes, it is a game as two players continuously try to make decisions by reading the opponent's mind. While playing a game, the player do not know their opponent's option or actual decisions in advance. So they must choose options based on assumption of their opponent's choices. Every day, we make hundreds and thousands of decisions which can be analyzed through game theory. Game theory is highly considered by most individuals including economists, biologists and psychologists to analyze their decision making and make alterations within time. Note, the game theory is termed as most important theory in the world, not just in economics but in every possible area such as political science, mathematics, biology, ecology and philosophy to name a few. In the year 1994, the economist John Nash, John Harseni, and Reinhard Selten received the Nobel Prize for developing a game theory about economics. Let's understand game theory with one of its classic examples, which is the prisoner's dilemma. Different versions of this game are present on the internet. There are two prisoners, A and B, who have been captured for robbing a bank. The police does not have enough evidence to convict them, but they are sure that they committed the crime. They decided to put A and B in a complete separate rooms and lay out the consequences. If both A and B confesses their crime, each of them will be behind bars for 10 years. If A confesses and B does not or vice versa, then the one who confessed will be free and the other one will spend 20 years in jail. If neither of them confesses, each one of them will be in prison for 5 years. Consider this situation as a game. There are two players, A and B. There are two options in front of them, confess or don't confess. The payoffs of the game range from going free or living in prison for 5, 10 or even 20 years. In this scenario, both the prisoners are in different rooms, so no one knows what the other decision is. Here, the best strategy for the both prisoners is to confess the crime, leading to the best payoff regardless of the another one's action. One economics website states, Dominant strategy equilibrium is reached when each player chooses their dominant strategy. A quick analysis of prisoner's dilemma reveals that both would likely testify 
the Nash equilibrium for this problem. This is because regardless of what the other person does, testifying will lead to maximum sentence of 5 years with a potential of 1 year sentence or if they don't testify, they'll end up with 10 years term. Let's understand why the strategy of not confessing the crime isn't the best option for both A and B. Choosing not to confess would give both of them less prison time than if they would have confessed. However, it would only work in a case if each of them are 100% sure that the other one would not confess. As both of the prisoners are in separate rooms, it's almost impossible to work together with that level of cooperation. In addition, both of them are unlikely to choose the strategy of not confessing. It offers a high level of penalty compared to choosing to confess. Above all, confessing the crime also gives A and B the possibility of serving no prison time less than 5 years. Over the years, the prisoner's dilemma example has undertaken to understand the concept of game theory. Apart from this, it's a great example to understand how rationality can be problematic in game theory. Like game theory, all other theories are based upon assumptions, making it challenging to analyze the circumstances and make a better decision. Game theory focuses on fair play. The competitive game theory majorly focuses on Nash equilibrium. Cooperative game theory has the Shapley value. According to Shapley value method, it divides up gains among multiple players depending upon the value they contributed. Once the player is removed from the game, their contribution is determined by what is gained or lost. This method is popularly known as marginal contribution. Let's understand this via an example. Assume you along with some of your friends are baking cakes. When any of you gets sick, the group prepares two fewer cakes than the day you were present. The marginal contribution of yours here are two cake per day as your friends decided to bake two less when you were not present. If one contributes nothing, they should receive nothing. Let's understand this with a simple example. Say you and your friend decides to go out for dinner, but you haven't ordered anything from the menu. So there's no need to contribute when the bill comes. Pretty fair, right? However, if we look at another case, if anyone is not able to contribute to the workforce, they shouldn't be receiving any compensation. Some of the reasons why one cannot contribute are, maybe they are on leave, they met with an accident, due to disability. In such a case, there are chances the coalition may pay them even if they are unable to contribute. In a competitive situation, a game theory can tell you how to be smart. However, game theory tells you how to be fair in a cooperative situation. Game theory can be used to analyze both economics and social situations. It is essentially the science of strategy and just like reality, it is trying to model game theory that gets complicated. Note, though the game theory is relevant to games as we typically understand them, such as poker, game theory can be applied to biology though. In fact, its application in the field of biology has allowed biologists to answer endless questions about evolution. Remarkable as gaming theory was never designed for this. Let's talk about this with an example. The game theory helps scientists explain biological altruism where organism acts most favorable for overall species. The concept of guessing others moves is what makes the game so tricky. All players need to speculate others move rather than just focusing on their turns. Essentially, you no longer are making a decision based on what you think is right. Rather, you are anticipating what the other player might be thinking is right and simply deciding your move on based of that. But remember, your opponent is just doing the same thing, making assumption based on your moves. So who's making the decision here? Another major problem is that although the concept of game theory offers various benefits, it would be impossible to apply each one of them properly in every possible situation. There must be times when you make inappropriate assumptions or mutual benefit might not be the ideal outcome. When you encounter such issues, it is up to you to recognize them and decide whether the game theory would be most appropriate choice for the situation or not. Humans are incredibly unpredictable and emotional, which makes the process of assuming or guessing others' activity nearly impossible. Game theory is a complicated concept and it's impossible to understand everything in a single go as it is something you apply in your real life but are consistently unaware of. 
it takes time to understand its complexity apart from economics truly it has its roots in mathematics statistics and probability where most things are assumed with this we have come to an end with our today's session now that you have learned game theory its application and various other concepts related to game theory we would love to hear your views about the same in the comment section below if you guys have any queries or questions about what we just discussed you can leave them in the comment section below and we would love to get back to you before leaving let's quickly have a summary about what we discussed today we started our today's discussion with an example of game theory later we unfold what a game is and what exactly a game theory is remember here game does not mean your regular games however the definition of game changes with game theory the next section discussed the world's famous the prisoner's dilemma that sets as the best example of game theory in the later part we continued by discussing the various game theory applications by the end we also talked about some other important points of game theory and marked a few important examples for the better understanding if you like this video don't forget to press the like button share and subscribe to our youtube channel don't forget to press the bell icon so you will be notified every time we upload a video until next time bye bye